new synthesizer in the studio, a Juno 106. And up until about 10 minutes ago, I was really excited about it until something happened to it. So I've only had it for a week and I've played around with it. I actually made a video already with it and didn't like it, so I'm reshooting it right now. And just before I did that, I thought I'd try testing all the voices just to see if they are all working. So I ran through a test and went through all six voices. There are six voices on this synthesizer, just like the other Junos. Looked like all the voices were working. I went back to the synthesizer and now when I'm on poly mode one, voice six just doesn't work. Luckily there is a poly two mode on this one, so I can put it to poly two. And I'm not sure how it's working, but maybe it's bypassing voice chip six because it knows that it's not working. Let's see what happens if I play uh, six notes. So now it's only a five voice synthesizer. One, two, three, four, five, and then nothing else. So I just got myself a Juno 105. Maybe I should change my t-shirt. The answer of whether you should get into vintage synthesizers is probably don't do it. There are probably going to be problems with it that even the owner has no idea about. So it's not that they're trying to scam you, but you get it home and you realize, oh yeah, if I want to get this fixed, it's going to cost a lot of money. So you really have to be careful with that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of good reasons to get into them. So we'll go over those as well. And I'm using patches made by Espen Craft, who is an amazing YouTuber, got incredible videos. He's made a bunch of patches that work for the Juno 106. So that's what I've got loaded in. And there's a way you can import them. I imported them and that all worked perfectly. So uh, very happy about that. And the patches sound amazing. So we'll look at a couple of those patches and we'll talk a little bit about what makes the Juno 106 a special synthesizer. And then we're gonna go look at SoftTube's Model 84 because it is, for all intents and purposes, a recreation of the Juno 106. So if you don't want to get the vintage synth and deal with headaches, then you can just pick up the software version. And of course, with the software version, when you buy the software version, you get to use as many of those in your project as you want. If I want to use the Juno 106 in a project, I have to record it as audio. So it's just one more headache that you have to put up with. But this one does have a really great way of storing patches and then recalling patches. So that's what sets it apart from my Juno 6, which you just have to put the sliders in the right spot and then you're good to go. And speaking of the Juno 6, I do have a video on synthesizers where I talk about all the basic components of the synthesizer. I'll put a link in the description. Make sure you go check that out. I do actually use the Juno 6 for that and go over all of the different sections and really give a rundown for a beginner on how synthesizers or synthesis works. So make sure you watch that video. What about some good reasons to buy synthesizers? Are there any good reasons to buy them? Why do I keep doing it. Well, the truth is when you buy a vintage synthesizer, if you can get it working, that thing's going to hold on to its value because they're not making them anymore. And to me, it's just owning a piece of history, owning a bit of the past. And when you work with hardware, something different happens. Like you have these limitations that you don't get with the software. So you start using different parts of your brain. I love pulling out a synthesizer, working on that in a song, and then that's it. You know, maybe not even storing the patch, but just letting it be something that just exists in that moment. So it does take you a little bit out of the convenience of the digital world and puts you in a box. And sometimes those boxes are exactly the, the limitations that you need. And for me, it's also kind of like an artwork thing. You know, I'd rather have beautiful synths in my studio than fancy artwork. This, this is my artwork. But in terms of music making, it's like the software is gonna get you there. And we're gonna try to compare this synthesizer to the software version and see how close it actually gets. I'm hoping that we can get pretty close, even with one voice missing on this synthesizer. So let's check out a couple of Espen's patches and then we'll go over to the software and just do a quick comparison. And I do have some reverb running here because these patches just kind of come alive.
beautiful patches. This synthesizer has a few tricks up its sleeve. One of them is this high pass filter. When you set it to one, that is actually no change at all. So you think of just a filter that's not doing anything. And as you drag it up, it's gonna filter out the low frequencies. Even that sounds like it's doing something wrong. Maybe I've got something wrong with my, my filter too. What a surprise. And if I take this lower, you can hear it getting a little bit warmer in the low end. And so what it's actually doing is if you push it down all the way to zero, it's actually boosting the low frequencies. Could be why people think of this as such a warm sounding synthesizer. Other than that, we've got this portamento mode, which is really fun. It's sliding between chords or single notes. This synthesizer has these poly modes. If I press both down at the same time, we get a unison mode and it gets a lot louder. Now you can only play one note at a time and it's actually stacking all the voices onto one key. That's why you get this kind of flangey sound. So a lot of people don't really like the sound of it, but it is cool to have on there. It does become a monophonic synth, which you can't do on the other Junos. Very, very cool little feature. Of course, a lot of fun. And then if you put the portamento in there. <laughs> So yeah, you're getting some really classic 80s slides around. You could probably do the THX logo. And then of course, the other benefit of this guy is that you get the ability to store patches, easily recall patches so you can save them and you can pull them off. And I love that feature. So the great thing about this synthesizer is it's got MIDI in and out and I can actually record the notes. I've got my MIDI track already set up. Now let's record something. As soon as I've got everything set up, I can just press play. And then of course I can go in there, I can quantize all the notes. One thing I can't do with this one is adjust velocity. So you can see that velocity is all set right at the middle. Not velocity sensitive, but that's okay. It's just the way the synth is. Anyways, let's go look at the software and see if we can recreate a patch on this guy and get it to sound the same. Okay, so here is the model 84 and we'll just play a few patches just to show you what this one is all about because I do actually have some presets on here by my friend J3PO and I've done an actual full interview with him on my channel called Beats and Chats. He's one of three people that I've interviewed and the two of us just talk about, you know, how he got to where he is and then we actually make some music together and at the end of the video. So make sure you go watch that. And we'll put a little bit of reverb on this one too. Sounds really good. Okay, so the patches sound great, you know, sounds like a Juno. I just set reset this as a default patch, whatever that means. And then I'm gonna go over to my Juno 106 here and see if I can recreate it and get it to sound the same. One thing I forgot to mention is that it is missing the sustain slider. So who knows how much that's gonna cost to get fixed as well, but. This is the fun of buying analog synthesizers. So I'm gonna set all my parameters to roughly the same, even if they're not really doing anything and see what happens here. And then as we see in the software, we've got EQ instead of high pass filter. And that one's set all the way at the bottom here. And then I go to my filter. I'm gonna get the filter in roughly the same place. Let's put the chorus on, see how close it sounds. So there you go, folks. Juno 106, not sounding exactly like the software. And I've seen some videos that compare the 106 to the software and they sound very, very close. And I don't think I'm missing anything else here. So I am gonna send this one to the shop. 
get it fixed. And this could end up costing me a whole lot more money. Then hopefully I'll make some more videos for it and, uh, you know, make up for it on the YouTube side of things. But that's how this stuff goes. And that's a very good reason for you not to get into hardware synthesizers because this kind of stuff is costly and frustrating, time consuming, all of that kind of stuff. So there we go. Jeff's life lessons about synthesizers. Hope this video was helpful for you. It was very frustrating to make and you know, maybe the next one will be a little bit better, but thanks for watching it and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.